so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard all those things which were told them about the But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart altogether. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. May the Lord add a blessing to his red word. Scholarship committee. Um, the deadline for applications is January 31st, and you can give those to Ms. Deidre Mevin or uh, Deacon Ellis Mevin. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you this morning for us being able to get up in our right minds and make you here to church this morning, God. Dear God, I thank you and praise you for all your many blessings and the things that you've done in my life and in everybody's life here. Dear God, I ask that you bless this offering and you let it be a blessing to the world and be able to bring people to Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. And let us stand and follow the direction of the ushers.
I love to praise His holy name. We just thank our singing choir uh, that always blesses me. I'm uh, just pressing their way out and singing from their hearts. So all those that are on the floor, our ushers, thank you so much uh, for our media staff. Thank you and for you for coming out this morning to give God praise and glory. Well, I'm ready to preach. Are you ready for God's word? Amen. Uh, please grab those uh, Bibles or devices or follow along with us to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I want you to go down to that fourth verse. It's amazing um, how God speaks to me often. I have so many messages that have been given to me uh, over the years, and I just kind of uh, write them down. I mean, uh, just hundreds, even thousands of messages that I haven't even uh, been able to preach yet. Uh, but every now and then I'll be riding home or in some other place, and God will just speak strongly to me a scripture that I've heard so many times, but it'll be enlightened. And to, today is one of those points. It just kind of hit me in my heart. On a few days ago, just as I was coming home. So that's 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. Would you look at that while we go on a word of prayer? Father, I just thank you so much for uh, who you are. I uh, thank you that you uh, speak to feeble men, feeble women, Lord, uh, children. Lord, thank you so much for your voice. Now, Lord, I pray for maybe there's someone here this morning that doesn't know you, does not know what that voice experience is like. Would you help them to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised him from the dead. Let them know, Father God, it's by grace through faith and not of themselves that it's a gift from you. Help them to believe, Father God, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, I thank you that your presence is already in this place. Thank you for the steadfastness of your word. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Would you cleanse me of all unrighteousness? Holy Spirit, please teach us and guide us and lead us into all truth. Please make this word so plain, so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed and be like you. Would you be in my eyes and my seeing, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding. Thank you for the anointing, Lord. We really want to be changed. We want to be transformed. Uh, we want to make you pleased, Lord. And we know the only way we can do that is allow you to take control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Second Corinthians uh, 10 and 4, it reads, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down strongholds. Second Corinthians 10, 5, Casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Listen to those two verses again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of of Christ. I want to speak from the subject this morning. Pull it down. Pull it down. This is an amazing book because it actually comes out of a response letter of 1 Corinthians. The time frame of this is around AD 56 and it's written from, from Macedonia to the Corinthians. Um, during this letter, Paul the Apostle is uh, thanking uh, the majority that has repented from 1 Corinthians. Remember, the Corinthian church was a huge church that had gifts that were flowing, but they were out of order. They got caught up in the gifts more than the gift giver. And in the midst of that, Paul the Apostle has to set down some strong guidelines on love and order in the church, putting Christ first, and also caring about those that are around. Also, there was a sect that had uh, grew up within the church that was teaching false doctrine, and Paul the Apostle in his letter, he had to correct that doctrine. But many of them, which were a minority of that majority, uh, were upset with Paul the Apostle. So he has to deal with them in 2 Corinthians, this letter also. Uh, throughout this book, you'll find out when you read it, he's constantly defending his authority. 
And the saints of God, as we are preparing to go into this chapter, we must realize God has allowed authority to be in the church. Uh, not of human uh, orientation or us trying to be ruling over anybody, but also that we can follow the flow of the Spirit. Even within our homes, we understand where there's a lack of authority. If there is no leadership, things will fall apart. Uh, I'm amazed as I look at society and the standards where parents are no longer in authority over their children. Uh, you, you've seen them. You've seen them at Target and Walmart and Food Line. These kids have taken over. They are, they are the authoritative ones that tell their parents what to do. And it's a sad situation when authority is in the wrong hands. Now, throughout this book, Paul the Apostle is trying to get everything in line with the authority, his authority, and also the elders and the leaders in the church. Uh, he talks about his conduct, his character, and most importantly, his calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, quickly, if you look at that ninth chapter, he actually has set out guidelines on giving. I, I love this chapter. We're actually teaching it in our Noonday Bible study. Uh, he exhorts on giving. He goes to the principles of giving, and there's a promise in giving also. And then he kind of switches gears. After he gets through with the giving, we go into 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and he begins to deal with even weightier matters. Let's pick up that first verse. Now I, Paul myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in the presence am lowly among you, but being absent am bold towards you. Now, this is important because the apostle not only understand that his authority comes uh, from Christ, but he realized that authority is by the grace of the Lord. Saints of God, without the Lord being on our side, we would be nothing. Uh, the respect that we hold, the things that God has allowed us to accomplish on our jobs and life, it's all been because of the grace and mercy of the Lord. But with this authority and this grace that's upon uh, your life, there comes a responsibility. Saints of God, I'm not just talking about the leaders in the church, but if you are a Christian, God has given you authority. Everywhere you go, God has given you authority. In every situation on your job, God has placed you there. A lot of people tell me, Pastor, I'm looking for a job that there's no stresses, that I can go in and be excited about going into my job. So many people want to, would you believe with me? Would you pray with me, Pastor, that I can get this perfect job where I get up and I run to it and I want to stay all day. And I, I said, you know what, maybe that might be for a couple of folks in the world. But for the most of us, we go through, we stress with our lives. And I know you're looking at me and you're saying, Pastor, you have a great job. You're a pastor of a nice church with cushioned pews and air conditioning and, and heating. Don't you run to the church? No, I struggle with the job that God has given me also. But I understand something. It's about grace and mercy. Yes, you, you think I just jumped up this morning going, yeah, let's just run to Ebenezer. I thought about staying in my bed also. It was raining outside. My bed was nice and soft, but I understand God gives us authority only by his grace, and there's a responsibility in all of our lives. If you're a wife and you're a Christian, God is giving you authority and responsibility. A husband and a Christian, God is giving you authority. Even the children that are saved have authority within their lives to submit themselves to their parents. Paul understands something from this scripture. He says, I'm pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ or the anointed one. Saints of God, we must understand as we go through issues in our lives, we've got two choices. To follow the devil or follow the Lord. Yes, yes, every struggle that's come in your life, you had two choices. To follow the enemy's way or God's way. We, we must understand that Satan is our enemy and not people. Please, please, please get this in your mind. Satan and the demons are our enemies, but not the person you've been fighting with. 
Now I know, I know you saying, Pastor, you don't know that person that gets on my last nerve. You you don't know the demonic spirits that they have. But please, you gotta separate it because that's the only way you can stay strong in your authority to realize there is a separation from the person and the enemy itself. Some people became so low within the church, they even attacked Paul's physical stance. But yeah, uh, they, they looked at Paul and, and theologians struggle with this. They believe that Paul had some kind of eye disease, that he was struggling and, uh, with his physical appearance. And some wrote in 2 Corinthians 10.10, 10, they said, For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak. And his speech is contemptible. Contemptible. This is very important as we begin to, to look at life within the church. Sometimes people can step to lower levels to attack your character. But even in that people talking about you, you still have to stand and let God know, you know what, you're in charge. And we've got to learn how to pull it down. How often in our life outside the church have we allowed people to push us out of the graces and mercy of the Lord? If you think about it, how many of you have thought in your mind, this comes a time that I'm going to lay my religion down? Really? Uh, really? You, you actually can lay your religion down? If, if you can do that freely and pick it up, you, you might not have much of religion anyhow. And so this whole process, I must understand as God allows things to come in my life and you must understand that we've got to learn how do I pull it down? How do I work through those things that I know that are going to come? You can be the nicest and gentlest person, but there's going to be some struggles in your life. Yeah, you may not speak out like such and such, but you're thinking about it in your mind. Amen. 2 Corinthians 10, 2, uh, Paul says, but I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. Appalled in, in the gentleness of Christ, the mercies of Christ, he also understands his authority. He understands that there are some things that must be confirmed. And we're in a day and time, I, I, I'll be honest, I, I don't like to fight. I don't like to struggle through stuff. But there's some things that are in scriptures that we need to call out, that we need to deal with. And I think that we're in a society that's becoming placid in so many things that, that we don't want to deal with certain situations, especially within the house of the Lord. Paul in essence is saying in 2 Corinthians 10 too, please do not force me to prove these allegations to be false. I don't want to come in and, and exhibit the authority that God has given me in all boldness. He doesn't want to be bold, but he realizes that, that some that are, that are going astray have to be dealt with. They have to be talked to. They have to be guided back onto that right path, but not by uh, the flesh. And sometimes we try to lead according to the flesh, but we must lead by divine unction. There have been times, if I can be honest with you, where, where I get upset with my children. I, I get upset with those that are around. And, and sometimes I feel like they're not listening to me, Tyrone. I, I don't know if you've ever been in this. And, and I'm, I'm, I am. I'm a pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church. I'm supposed to know this stuff. I'm supposed to be walking in the spirit all the time. But sometimes I raise my voice. Any amens in the house? And, and the reason I raise my voice because I get into the carnality part. I feel like since you're not listening to me, maybe if I get loud with you, it's going to go deeper on the inside of you. But sometimes, Tyrone, even when I raise my voice, it, it gives the opposite effect. It seems like people shut down. And you know what? Instead of going to the spiritual tools, I get loud. Now, I know if you want to get upset and say, I can't believe Pastor Woods is like that. Well, you need to look at your own self. You need to pray for me. I'm just being honest. But, but we got to understand, how do we pull it down? Am I the only person in the house that has issues, that has struggles, that, that sometimes loses it? 
Paul the Apostle, one of the greatest apostles, he said, I, I, I don't want to come in a, in, a, in a way of carnality. I, I want to walk in the Spirit. And we see that Paul the Apostle even struggled. He said, the good I would do, that evil is always around. Any amens with that? You're trying to do the best you can do, but it seems like demons and the devils are surrounding you. You ever got up on a good day and by the time you got to bed, it was a bad day? Why? Because the devil wants to take us to the point of losing it, but I'm learning how to pull it down. Look at 2 Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Pull it down. Now, now there's a, a differentiation that we need to make within ourselves that we have flesh on. And because we have flesh on, we still deal with the fleshly nature. Yeah, I don't care how spiritual you are, how holy you are, you still got to deal with your flesh. Right? You, you can be in the, the, the greatest of service and get a, a spiritual word, a revelation, illumination, but your flesh will speak up. You, 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 you ever try to go on a longer fast and, and your flesh will let you know it's time to eat. Yes. yes, I don't care how much you read in the Bible, how much you drink in water, or whatever you're doing, your flesh will cry out because it wants to take control. And Paul the Apostle brings it out. He said, we walk in the flesh. But we don't war according to the flesh. You remember the flesh. The flesh is way of uh, yelling at folks, trying to control them. And some of you were fighters. You, 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 you came from a background. If somebody didn't go your way, you showed them how to go your way. You, you were scrappers. You, you, you scratched your way through. You, 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 would, no, you would take your high heels off and you would put it in line because you knew how to work the flesh. But now that we're saved, things have changed. Some people have come and say, Pastor, I feel like a doormat. Before Christ, I took it and I, I could slash tires. I, people respected me because I, I could stand up with them in myself. But now I'm a Christian. Mean, you mean I can't fight anymore? You don't know what they've done to me. And I'm, I'm just supposed to be quiet? No, you just got to learn spiritual warfare. Things have changed. God is saying, I'm going to fight your battles now. Trust me, we do not war according to the flesh. We do not use fleshly motives anymore. But now we say, God, please order my steps in the spirit. Pull it down. How do we do that? 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds. Paul actually continues with this uh, military metaphor. It's very important. He talks about these strongholds. And strongholds are high military battlements thrown up in battle to protect the enemy. Or also to protect those that are on, on, the, on the good side. We see it on both sides. But Paul the Apostle uses this. He says that the enemy sometimes, it, he throws up strongholds. Strongholds of the mind. Strongholds of re broken relationships. Strongholds of church splits and divisions within our lives. Strongholds of false doctrines that have come into our church. Things that have come into our world. Strongholds. And he says, for the Christian, we've got to know how to pull them down. And then he gives us, he says, our weapons are spirit. When I went into the military, I, I learned how to, to shoot guns. I, I, I learned how to, to use weapons of warfare to protect me and to protect our nation. But oftentimes when we become a Christian, we don't understand spiritual warfare. We don't understand that the devil is on our track. When I was in the military, I learned that the enemy is coming after you, you shoot first and you ask questions later. But oftentimes when it comes to Christians, we see the enemy coming and we don't know what to do. We stand there in fear, but we must understand how to plead the blood of Jesus. That God has our back, has our front, has our top, has our below. He is all over. And Paul said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God. And then he says, we can even pull it down. 
They are made for the pulling down of battlements, pulling down everything that the enemy can throw at us. I, I know you're thinking, you, you, Pastor, you don't know some of the stuff that the enemy has set up in my life. I want you to know that you can pull it down. Now, I'm not promising you everything is going to go well and easy for you, but I am telling you when you're going through warfare, when you're going through spiritual battle, that when you understand that God is on your side, it gives you peace as you're going through the struggle. It lets you know that you're already got the battle won. Some of you may need a, a little example. Remember in the Old Testament, Joshua was the leader that followed Moses, and he had been in the presence of Moses. Uh, he was an experienced military leader, but God had to take him to the point of getting away from physical battle on some time and learning spiritual warfare. Joshua understood how to take a spear and take an enemy out. He understood how to put people in certain places and, and take down the battlements, but he did not understand spiritual warfare. So when they go into the promised land, the first city that they have to deal with is Jericho. And God says, you know what? I could give you the authority to use carnality to take over Jericho, but I'm going to show you something about spiritual warfare. Joshua 6.1, it says, now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. That second verse, and the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. Pull it down. Going along with what Paul the Apostle said, the first thing we have to understand is that we've already won the battle. Even when you don't see it being pulled down, it's already pulled down. Now, I know it seems like I'm talking out of both of a size of mouth, but what we're dealing with now is faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I have to understand in this battle that I've already won. No matter what I see in front of me, I've already won. No matter how it feels, I, I've already won. And he tells Joshua this. He says, see, I've already given them to you. Now, if it was me, because I struggle with it in my life, I'm like, God, don't you realize the walls are still big and, and the king is inside of, of his battle, man. And, 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 and how can you say that you've given me everything? Joshua 6, 3, he said, God said, you shall march around the city. All you men of war, you shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. The fourth verse, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark, but the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets, pull it down. The fifth verse, it said, it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up every man straight before him. Pull it down. We're talking about spiritual warfare. There's sometimes within your life, Paul the Apostle is bringing out, and we use that Old Testament example, you've got to learn how to shout. Yeah, yeah, you got to know how to blow the trumpet. It's not about your physical proudness of breaking down the wall yourself, but you got to know there's angels in camp all around you. I dare you every now and then to try this principle uh, that you've got to go spiritual and say, you know what, instead of fighting, I used to fight physically with my hand, but now I'm going to put a praise on. I'm going to put a worship on. I dare you to throw up your hands in the midst of your enemy. Your, your enemy will get confused. I'm, I'm telling you, when you get a bad report from it. I dare you. I dare you. I know it's crazy. I know it seems that a pastor, well, you have lost your mind, but I dare you when you're sitting in the doctor's office, just lift up your hand. I don't want you to get too Pentecostal because it may scare the doctor, but just lift up your hand and say, Lord, I stretch my hands to thee. Lord, the help I know if thou would withdraw thyself from me. Well, I dare you. I dare you in the midst of an almost argument, in the midst of an almost struggle, when you got ready to lose your mind, your temper is almost spilling over. I dare you to throw up. And all of a sudden, people are like, what is going on? You, you ain't getting ready to fight not the way they think, but you get ready to go into a realm of glory and say, I'm getting ready to pull something down right now. Your enemy say, you get ready to fight with me. He no, I'm not going to fight with you the way you think I'm going to fight with you, but I'm getting ready to go down on my knees. I'm getting ready to call on the name of the Lord. You better watch out now because I know that God can change things. Pull it down. Look at 2 Corinthians 10 5. So the spiritual warfare, he says, he says, casting down arguments in every high thing. 
that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. Pull it down. Now, now this is important. Paul the Apostle said, as we use this spiritual warfare, what we must understand, we're discerning between the person and the demonic powers that are around. And we've got to know that we can cast down now, now, these arguments can be uh, scientists that are, that are reasoning contrary to the word of God, evolutionists, philosophers, uh, religionists, all of these type things. But I like to apply it even to our lives. When we get into struggles of our life and we want to argue through some stuff, we got to know, you know what, I can cast this down. Because when you think in your life, all the arguments that you've had, have they really turned out good? Have you really won or have you caused more problems for yourself? So i got to learn how to cast down arguments. I, I, when I'm dealing with my family and my children and those that are around, I, I told my wife, you know what, I, I'm getting older. I, I don't want to argue with it anymore. I, I want to figure out how we can solve some things in our lives. And I'm, I'm using more spiritual warfare. I'm saying, hold up, hold up. Before we go any further with this, uh, give me just a few moments. Let me go talk to the Lord. Let, let me get myself in a peaceful state so I can see the way through this. I, I'm saying, hold up, hold up. You, you know road rage that's, uh, that's on the road. I, I got folks that are cut in front of you and you talk, Tyrone, I'm, I'm talking to you. Can I just talk to you? You know, when you're driving that big truck and everything, they don't know how big you are and everything, and they, they're going in and out. You got to say, hold up, hold up. I, I do want to say something to you, but it ain't, that, that's carnality. But but what I'm going to do is pray for you that, that you don't get ran over by somebody, that you'll get yourself together. I want to get into that spiritual realm of using that spiritual warfare. So I want to cast down arguments and, and every, every high thing that exalts his gift, it, itself against the knowledge of God. Everything that comes against me that's trying to get me out of the spirit, I want to pull it down. Now, I, I know, I know, because in this day and time, there's so much stuff that's hitting us from the left and right, but we got to learn how to pull it down. No, no, you're not going to get me out of my peace. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I, I've been praying too much, that, and, and God has put the, the peace to, too deep on the inside. You're not going to pull me out of my peace, so I got to pull down, I got to cast it down, and I'm going to bring every thought Every thought of my mind that's contrary to the will of God, I'm going to bring it into captivity. And I'm going to make it a being to Christ. I saw this, uh, this, this great documentary. Uh, there were these two bears, and they had been in a, a wildfire, and, and their feet had been burned. And, and, and the scientists, those that were trying to help out these bears, they realized something. They said, these are bears. They, they've been in the wild. And they said, we, we can't mess with these, these, these bears until we cage them. Now, this is important to denote because they wanted to help them into the cyst. Uh, they, they caged them. They tranquilized them. They put them in a cage. And you may think that's bad, but they understood the only way you can be protected, you got to put you got to put that which is, is not of your nature into a cage. And they were able to assist it while it was in the cage. But in order to put it back into the environment, they had to let it out of the cage. And when we're going into spiritual warfare, there's so many times that we got to put the stuff in the cage. We, we got to realize, you know, what I can't fight with this stuff. And some of you have been trying to fight with things that you don't have the authority to fight with and God said just put it in the cage. You lock that thing up and say you cannot come out of that so I can figure out how to work this stuff out. You got to put some cages in your life. And I, I, I am, I'm, I'm realizing I cannot fix everything but I know how to put it in a cage. I lock that thing up and I said I'll be back for you later because God is going to work that thing out. You got to learn how to pull it down. 2 Corinthians 10, 6 and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So Paul the Apostle says, I, I, I've got the spiritual warfare. I, I want the church to be in line. I understand I don't have to fight with, with carnal warfare, but I'm, I'm using spirit. Spiritual weapons. Uh, Henson writes, trying to pull us together, uh, a great uh, enlightenment thought. He says, continuing the metaphor, Paul is still at war. He is casting down strongholds. He is leading captives. Now he is prepared to punish all disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled, Paul does not intend to deal with them quite so severely until he has given them ample time to repent and fall into submission both to the Lord and to himself. Pull it down. 
So as we're using spiritual warfare, we must understand, you know what? God's grace is working it out. Because if we were honest with ourselves, all of us have been on the enemy's side. And aren't you glad for a level of grace? Aren't you glad that God didn't kill us? Amen. Didn't take us out? Because some of us realize we deserve to be dead last week. We deserve to be dead last year when we lost it. When we were out of the will of God and we were on the devil's side. But I'm, I'm so glad that we're learning and God has given us grace to understand how to pull down that everything that's contrary to the will of God. I'm so glad that, that when we are in our weakest state, we can remember what Paul said. You remember 2 Corinthians 12, 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in need, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. The devil does not understand how a Christian can get their praise on when everything is falling around them. The devil cannot understand how can I give worship to God when it seems like things are not going my way because I'm knowing how God is understanding, giving me understanding how to pull some stuff down within my life. Yes, isn't this the example that Christ gave us by teaching like none other? He pulled down the hypocrisy of the leaders of his day that were guiding the people on the wrong track. You remember in Matthew 23 and 23 Jesus said, woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of the mint and, a, and anise and, and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. Yes, mercy and faith. These ought to have done without leaving the others undone. He calls them blind guys who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but the inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. That 26th verse, he says, blind Pharisees, first cleanse the inside of the cup and the dish, that the outside of them may be cleansed also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. you got to learn how to pull it down. You've got to be able to separate the person from the issues that they're going through. And you've got to let them know this is contrary to the will of God. But we have all failed to pull down the things that we need to pull down in our life. We've tried to go our own way, but I'm so glad for God's will within our life. But I'm so glad that Jesus not only put others in their place, but he lived the life for us. Are there any glad folks in the house? Because what what I couldn't do and, and what you couldn't do. I'm so glad to tell you there's a sinless lamb who did it for us. He, Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. Oh, he used the word when tempted in the wilderness. Remember Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. No matter how hard the devil hit him, he pulled down every stronghold. Are there any Christians in the house? that want to take a punch from the devil but yet you still don't go down you still know how to call on the name of the Lord you don't want to lose your tool anymore but you want to say God is all by your grace today and I'm telling you I found out that God will fight your battle God will work it out in the nick of time don't you remember Jesus as he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane Luke 22 42 saying Father if it is your will take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. If I can only get to the point in my life and I can say God is not about my will anyway. If you want me to work in this jacked up job, then I must realize that God, you got me there for a purpose. God, if you've allowed me to be in this relationship that's falling apart, then obviously you're doing something bigger than I can understand. God, I don't want to be shit, but since I got the disease in my body and I'm a Christian and God, I know I'm exactly where I need to be. God, I know you can heal me. God, I know you can deliver me. But if you don't, I still got blood running warm in my veins. I still got breath that's in my lungs. And while I'm sick, while I'm going through, I'm going to use some spiritual warfare. Why don't I just give you praise right now? Are there any praise and worship? I didn't really come to preach like this, but I done got a little excited here. But I need to let the devil know the story is 
not over. Do you know Jesus went to the cross of Calvary? He took nails in his hands and nails in his feet. You know the devil thought it was all over. He thought that he had Jesus, but I'm so glad that Jesus was right where he needed to be for me. He was pulling down strongholds. He said, Pastor, how can he pull down something when he was lifted up on a cross? How can he pull down strongholds when nails are in his hand? Well, there's an old song. It said, lift him up. Lift him up. He will draw all men unto me. There was something striking that happened on the cross. How can I preach about the cross every Sunday and then not get old? Because on that cross was my deliverance. On that cross was my freedom. On that cross was my healing. On that cross was my blessing. On that cross was my great. You say, Pastor, give me one more scripture. Well, John 12, 31. Jesus had already spoken before he got to the cross. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus understood. It didn't look real good. It looked like the devil was winning. But I'm so glad the victory was already won. All blood was coming down his brow. The disciples had run away from him. But I'm so glad that victory is on the way. I'm telling you, don't give up to take. You just gotta pull some stuff down. He died on the cross of Calvary. Don't walk out of the church yet. Oh, they put him in a cold chain. Don't walk out yet. Oh, it was the first day, and it was the second day, but early Sunday morning. I mean, it ain't man in the house of hope. Early Sunday morning. Oh, we found out he pulled out everything. On our behalf, would you come to your feet? For the weapons of our warfare, are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ's Father. Thank you. Oh, your word is so wonderful. Thank you, God. Oh, God, if we could just stay right here, man, we, we could beat everything that comes against us. But we know, Lord, we have to leave this spiritual tabernacle. Go back into the world where our carnal fleshes will, will rise up. But help us to be transformed to your likeness. To have more victories on that spiritual path. Lord, to be honest, honest with you, you, you know some of us have some bad DNA. But we come from a family of fighters. And people who like to argue. Hot tempers. Thank you for saving us, God, but there's still those inklings of the flesh of our DNA that's been passed down from generation to generation. Help us, Lord! Lord, some of us have got DNA strands that have been more gentle. Came from families that really didn't fight, but yet that didn't make us better, Lord. We thought about it in our minds. We struggled within our spirits, causing ulcers and heart issues. Forgive us. Lord, and bring us all to the knowledge of your truth. Of learning how to fight on a spiritual ramp. Turning it over to you. Casting down all arguments. Pulling every thought into captivity to your will. Help us to pull it down. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Find on your feet and ask our deacons, our elders from Ebenezer, those ministers that are here from Ebenezer, if you would come forth and take the altar at this point. First invitation, salvation. If you're here and you don't know Christ, man, I pray that you've already accepted him while you were listening to the word of God. You asked him into your heart, but just in case, this would be a great time to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. That God has raised him from the dead. And the scriptures are so true. 
you will be saved. See, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. It doesn't matter. We all have failed. The best that we can present to God, the Old Testament lets us know it's as filthy rags. So therefore, it's by grace through faith, not of yourself. It's the gift of God. If you don't know Christ, we beg you, we implore you to come forth today. You've confessed your sins. You come forth as an open confession to the congregation that we can pray with you. We can encourage you in your walk. If you're here today, the altar is open for you. A second and final invitation while you're thinking of that. This is the invitation that we learn how to pull more things down. It's amazing. All of us have our weak points. You know, we can be in certain situations and we're cool as a cucumber. But we can be in other situations where certain people, man, we just lose it. We all have our struggles. It could be in family situations, job situations. It could be a bodily issue. We all have our weak point. Everyone in here. And so if you are specifically something comes to your mind that you're struggling through, you're trying to trust God. You've been using maybe carnal warfare and it hadn't been working out. You want to learn more how to pull down those strongholds to actually apply these scriptures to your life on a daily basis. We want to pray with you. We want to believe with you. Uh, we invite you to the altar at this time. Maybe you say, Pastor, uh, I'm coming. I've got some stuff, but I want to intercede for somebody else. Would you just come? Maybe you need one of the preachers or the deacons, the elders to pray with you. Maybe you just want to stand. Some come and they bow down. But this is just an act of faith. You say, God, I'm bringing it to you. I'm bringing it to you. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know what else to do. And I see, I finally see within the scripture, I need to go to that spiritual plane, that spiritual level of victory. And, and I'm telling you, God will never fail you. If that's you today, come for salvation. You're bringing it to the Lord. Intercession, intercession. I want to give you some time. I want to give you some time. God is faithful. God is worthy, 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 worthy of all the praise. Would you come? Would you come? Oh, he's faithful. He's faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Anybody love him today? Oh, Minister Rudd, would you come forth? God is faithful. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I love to say that so often. And all that he's done for me, my soul truly shouts out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Minister Rudd, if you lead us in prayer. Gracious and most holy Father. Lord God, we thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing and supplying each and every one of our needs. Lord God, we thank you for taking the time and remembering your children in every step that we take and every mistake that we make. Father, you've been there for us in all of our trying situations. You've been there from the very beginning, helping us, leading us, and guiding us. And we thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we ask at this time that you would just reach out and hold us and use us in a way in which only you can use us. You know what's going on in our lives. You know what's going on in our homes, on our jobs, and all around us. But Father, we thank you for just moving on our behalf. You've never forsaken us. You've never left us alone. You keep on blessing us. You keep on lifting us up, even when we fall short of your glory. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the things that you've done in our lives that we still don't know about. How you made a way out of no way. How you've taken care of us in season and out of season. How you've allowed us to make it to this point, Lord. We 
We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to open our eyes, ears, and our hearts. Help us to remember you in everything that we do. Help us to remember you in everything that we say. Help us to be more like you, Jesus. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for the word that you have blessed us with today. Uh, how are you teaching us how to pull down, how to let you move on our behalf? That everything, there is a purpose. There's a reason why. We thank you for this great man of God. Keep on using him, Father. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word is growing more and more in me. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that you would just continue to have your way with us in our homes, on our jobs, and all around us, Father. We know that the world needs to see a light in this dark and evil world that we are partaking in. It's not our world. But you are in charge of it. And you can do all things. And because of you, we can have what you would have us to have. Oh, Lord God, we ask that you would just heal our bodies, heal our minds, heal our spirits right now, Lord. Prepare us to go to battle. Prepare us to walk in this war. Lord, you love us. You laid down your life for us. You've done it all. You've paved it all. you shed your blood for us. We ask, Father, that you would just allow us to remember. That you would allow us to understand and walk in. But, Father God, at this moment, we ask and we pray that you would hear all of our prayers that you would just walk with us, talk with us, lead and guide us to do all things that are necessary in your name. But Father God, we come to this point, preparing to walk out of this building. We need your covering. We need your loving. We need your everything. We thank you right now. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you're still on your feet, and we prepare to close out. Today after our 11 o'clock service, we have our Newcomers Foundational Truth Class. We try to do that every quarter. It's for all of our new members, or if you're interested about uh, Ebenezer, um, just our doctrine, um, our beliefs, um, why Ebenezer. You just need to understand a little bit more about you know, how things flow within Ebenezer. Please, we invite you to come out. It's right after our 11 o'clock service, so about 12.45 or so. Uh, we actually feed you, we give you food. I don't know what they have on the menu of the day, but it'll be filling. Uh, then we go through our class. We have um, booklets that we pass out. Uh, we get to communicate one with another, talk to one another. And at that time, you can learn more about Ebenezer. So if that's you, uh, please come on out after our 11 o'clock service. And you're also welcome at our 11 o'clock service. I'm excited about that. Would you pray for me? Because I get so excited about the Word of God. Uh, really, um, our 11 o'clock service, we're coming off the Mount of Transfiguration, and we're going to really learn more about spiritual warfare. We're going to deal with a, a young boy who was demon-possessed, and Jesus had to deal with it on a spiritual manner. Why uh, the, the people, his disciples, couldn't cast that demon out. Uh, so we're, we're going we're gonna to take it to Jesus today. So if you have time, call on back to our 11 o'clock service. I'm excited about the good. Anybody excited about the Lord? I am really, really. I know some of you. The football team, it comes on, and, and if they were going to the Super Bowl, Tyrone, if they were going to the Super Bowl, man, you would be, you pumped. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you feel. You just 
pump. Uh, but that's the way I am with the Word of God. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. You open a Bible for me, it's just by God's grace I get excited about the Word of God because He's never, ever failed. Thank you, our musicians. Thank you so much for, for coming out. Man, thank the twins. Um, but that's another that's another story. But thank you for coming out today. Father, thank you for your presence. Lord, thank you for our fellowship. Thank you for this 8 o'clock family. Lord, you are amazing. You are amazing what you're doing in this place. Thank you for our 11 o'clock family. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Help us to go in his peace. In his wonderful name we pray. Amen. Would you greet someone before you leave today, please?